it is time to pause AI experiments for at least six months. That's the message from the Future of Life Institute in an open letter published today. Signers include Elon Musk, Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak, and former presidential candidate Andrew Yang. They're calling for a pause for training AI systems more powerful than GPT-4. Joining us now on this and more is Founders Fund general partner Keith Raboy. Keith, I want to talk AI and e-commerce and some other things, but first, SVB, right? Um, because this was a, a huge issue for Silicon Valley and the banking system and beyond. Uh, you and your portfolio companies right in the middle of it. Tell me about how you handled it. Did you advise your portfolio companies to pull their money from SVB, some of it, all of it, ahead of the bank's collapse? Uh, no, I think there was uh, not a one-size-fits-all piece of advice that applied to our portfolio companies. I probably work with 20 companies, and each of them had different situations, different cash flow needs, different pre-existing bank relationships. So there definitely wasn't a policy or one-size-fits-all solution that founders across the board followed or that we advised. I was talking to Adrian Aoun. Uh, you're on his board over at Forward. Uh, I think a half an hour after you got off the, the phone with him, he wasn't initially able to get his money out of SVB. And we were talking about the challenge that that posed. What's the lesson here? Is it a problem that there was a run on this bank? I mean, a problem for the people who pulled their money? Or does the blame lie with the bank itself, the Fed, et cetera, for uh, setting it up that way to begin with? Well, the bank obviously made a, a, you know, sort of an insane calculation on interest rates not rising. And when you are massively exposed to technology investors, technology founders, and technology companies, going long on that position is actually literally insane. Because as soon as interest rates go up, tech valuations go down. It's the inevitable law of physics. We've just seen this for the last 18 months. And the fact that the bank that had the highest concentration of tech wealth ever was going was betting on interest rates staying low as a hedge is literally absurd. Mm -hmm. So uh, this was the bank that was supposed to know Silicon Valley the best, but but botched Silicon Valley behavior. At the same time, you've given in the past SVB a lot of credit for uh, pardon the pun for for the help that they gave in you launching some of the things that you've launched. Uh, so what do you do? You put money back into what used to be a Silicon Valley bank now because the tech ecosystem needs it? Or, hey, are you just a resident of Miami now? It's a whole different game. Well, I'm a happy customer. I've been a happy customer of Silicon Valley Bank, First Republic Bank, for a long time. Um, but that doesn't mean that the risk management protocols and management teams were appropriately running the bank. Um, so, you know, some extent you can be a happy customer because they're subsidizing, you know, not the best behavior of my customers. Hmm. Um, but in, in any event, um, I think that Silicon Valley does not need a specialized bank. I think that's overrated. Um, I think people need confidence in the banking system. Individuals need confidence in the banking system. Companies need confidence in the banking system. But that's not a fun, that's not unique to tech. The hmm. biggest mistake the government made was freezing the accounts. By freezing the accounts on Friday, everybody panicked, including like Adrian's situation, where there was some risk that he wasn't going to be able to meet payroll. And that was a function of government policy. If the government had just announced you could have access to 25% of your deposits right away, then nobody would have missed their payroll and nobody would have been scared about their payroll and there would have been time to sell off the assets. Hmm. But I think because the government acted unilaterally and massively and froze everything with no clarity, then everybody had to worry about like bills that were coming due immediately. And that was a massive miscalculation. All right, I want to move on and talk AI, this call to pause uh, some of this training for six months. You have said that China has some natural advantages when it comes to AI. I, I assume that's they don't have to worry about um, protecting people's data and privacy, and they got more than a billion people at the same time. Can we afford to slow down at all on AI and still expect to beat China? Absolutely not. We have an existential threat posed by the CCP. This is the biggest you know, foreign policy potential crisis in 50, 60, 70 years for the United States. They don't just have military power, they have economic power. And the combination of those two things is incredibly jeopardizing to the United States' self-interest and potential existence. The AI is the most important technology of the future. And if China dominates, we are going to be at an incredible disadvantage in terms of influence and potentially in terms of economic power, which will inevitably lead to an American decline. So slowing down AI research makes absolutely zero sense when you're in an existential battle with someone who wants to be 
the replacement for the United States and Western democracy.